In the last episode, we started to look at the famous tree swing pictures and the powerful concepts that these can convey. Historically, they tend to be used to illustrate common issues in large technology projects that can even sometimes lead to their failure. But I think that the messages also transfer over to algo trading extremely well and provide a really great way of helping to convey common algo trading issues and pitfalls. So we looked at the first seven tree swings last time, and we look at another seven in this episode. So following on from last week's episode, let's now move on to the next seven tree swing illustrations and look at how they can be used to help us as algo traders. First up, how the algo trader commented their code. This image represents the fact that many traders don't put enough time and effort into the commenting of their code. This of course goes hand in hand with the lack of quality documentation that we talked about last time. And the issues you'll face are almost identical here. If you only use superficial commenting, or even worse, no commenting at all, this means that when you come back to a system in a year's time to make an enhancement or to fix a bug, it will often be difficult to understand the rationale for why your code was written in the way that it was. This can then cause the developer to change things without realising the impact of what they're doing. Remember that you coded things the way you did for a good reason at that time. And this was based on your understanding of the best way to implement the premise of your strategy. So let me clarify regarding the type of commenting I'm referring to here. I'm not talking about comments such as how standard functions and so on work. That can easily be looked up online if necessary. I'm talking about comments that clearly articulate how and why the code is written in the way it is in order to represent the logic of your system premise and the associated rules. Believe me when I say that there is a good chance you will not remember this in 12 months time unless you've got good quality comments. For some parts of my code, I have maybe three or four times as many lines of comments than I do actual lines of code. And this ensures I have the information I need in the future in the right place and in the context of the algo. How data misunderstandings affected the algo system. Traders not properly understanding the difference between the data used for backtesting models and the data experienced in a real-time price feed when you put your system live can cause huge discrepancies between backtest results and live results. Basically, get this wrong and trades will not execute in live in the same way they did in your backtesting which of course makes the whole backtesting process a waste of time. So let me clarify, you have a choice in backtesting tools as to whether you want to use tick data, bar open prices, M1, OHLC prices and so on. If you choose to use either of these latter two options, but you don't have the right code in your EA to control processing based on bar opens, then you will have this problem. I'm not saying here that you shouldn't use M1 data for backtesting. I use it myself. I don't use tick data at all. For my trading style, where my trades mostly last between 1 hour and 24 hours, tick data is not really necessary and just makes backtesting painfully long. But I do have to properly control bar opening in code to ensure that there's unified processing across both backtesting and live trading. There are a few ways in which you can do this and there's plenty of information about it online. So make sure you search for this and take action accordingly in your code. How the trader released an overfitted system. Anyone who's followed my backtesting and optimization video series will have heard me talk a lot about this subject. 
So you'll have heard me speak about using in-sample data for optimizations, reserving out-of-sample data for walk-forward validation phases, and what is probably my most important point, which is ensuring your backtest and optimization results are statistically significant. If you only have 100 trades in your backtests, then I'm sorry to say that the statistical significance will be so poor that it probably isn't worth backtesting at all. The results will be fairly meaningless, and if you decide to trade a system based on results with poor statistical significance, then this will end really badly. You need to have somewhere in the region of 500 to 1000 trades to even start getting results that you can trust as being remotely indicative of what your results would be like in live trading. But if you can get more than this, then all the better. My back tests typically have between 15,000 and 20,000 trades across the entire in-sample and out-of-sample periods. In some of my other videos in the backtesting and optimization playlist on the Darwin X channel, you'll find many of these videos on this subject and they go into far more detail than I can in this video. So be sure to check those out if you haven't already. So that's the first three illustrations in today's episode. Click top right now to continue with the rest.